Hello everybody, and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the 2022 Senate elections according to a polling aggregate that I built. So let's get right into it here. I've already filled in most of the states because most of the states aren't competitive and aren't you know really worth me uh, doing the math for, but there are 10 states that I chose to uh, average the polls in, and those are the states we'll be looking at today. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about how I built this polling aggregate and what it means and why I think it's going to be a fairly good indicator of where these races are headed. Now, the way I built this aggregate is pretty simple. I, I think actually you guys could, like if you watching this video wanted to build your own, it's it's pretty easy to do if you just, you know, uh, have the right set of information, which is obviously easy to find and free to find on Google. Um, I basically took every poll on 538 and I also recite some of the polls, like, you know, we have some Center Street PAC polls, some Echelon Insight polls, you know, some polls that tend to be very Democratic leaning that show crazy results like Federman up by 20 in Pennsylvania or uh, Kelly up by 18 in Arizona. I chuck those out because I think that they're totally worthless and are not worth averaging at all. And then the rest of the polls are kept in. Even like even some Republican leaning pollsters like Trafalgar, I like to keep them in because they kind of balance out the natural bias polls to have towards Democrats. I think we all know that in the past um you know really four american election cycles including midterms the polls have underestimated democratic support or sorry have underestimated republican support overestimated democratic support so even though trafalgar might not be an honest pollster or a particularly good pollster in general i still have them in just to you know kind of can't uh, help cancel out that natural bias that is always going to exist in the polls um the next thing i do is i take the 2020 miss and half it so let's say a poll in ohio had trump winning by four and he ended up winning by eight uh, what I would do is I would add 2% to you know J.D. Vance's number in Ohio. So if he's up by 2 in that poll, I'd have him up by 4. Because again, I think it's still worth looking at 2020 miss just to see what we're dealing with, but not in full. I think giving pollsters some benefit of the doubt is pretty good, especially when you remember that since 2020, the polls have either been right on the mark or underestimated the Republican Party, or, uh, or sorry, un underestimated the Democratic Party, like in California, New York 19, all these special elections we've had. Uh, and then New Jersey Governor's Day is like the only race where like the polls overestimated Democrats, but we only like three or four polls that were in the final month of that campaign. So does it matter? Probably not. Um, and lastly, I, you know, average out those numbers and you get a result. And generally speaking, in, 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 in nine of these 10 states, the result is more Republican than 538 because I'm tossing out the super crazy Democratic pollsters and I'm giving Republicans a bit more of a boost than maybe they even would deserve. But again, this is not, you know, this is not a margin prediction. This is not me saying what I think the margins are going to be. This is really just me, um, you know, saying, look, I I'm giving the Republicans every bounce they can get in the polls. I'm, you know, giving them a favorable average. I'm giving them a favorable a set of uh, numbers right here. And if they're not winning in a state in, in, this, in this polling average that I have, they're probably not winning it in the general election. So let's take a look at these polls because they uh, tell a really interesting story. So the first state we'll do is the state of Arizona. We're going alphabetical order here. And in 538, Mark Kelly, the Democrats, up by 7.4. In my aggregate, he's up by 5.3. Again, it's just me averaging out these numbers. And Kelly's ahead in every poll when adjusted except for data for progress. But data for progress, he's you know he's only down 0.3, first of all. And secondly, uh, data for progress had Mark Molinar winning the New York 19 election by 8%. To me, there's clearly some level of overcorrection. Now, I, I didn't factor that, it, factor that into this average um, because there's no, there's no way to like prove that till it's really been proven. But I do suspect that, especially because, you know, they were very biased towards the Democrats in 2020, but are now showing super Republican leaning results. So I think they're kind of overcompensating, if that, if, if you will. But anyways, you know, without that, Kelly's up by even more. But he's up by 5.3% in this average. So that would be a likely margin of victory for Mark Kelly. Very solid performance for him. He'd be outrunning his 2020 numbers by about 3%. So very good for Mark Kelly. Colorado, uh, right down 538, he's up by 9 uh, in this, I, I have him up by 5%. And again, this is a very favorable polling average because I'm basically giving the Democrats, or I'm giving the Republicans 2% in every single poll because uh, for, for polls where I don't have a have a 2020 miss, because like, for example, m like I could not find McLaughlin polling Colorado in 2020. So I actually give the Republicans the benefit of the doubt in every single poll that didn't do 2020. So they, are, they automatically get a two-point bounce if the poll didn't get do the poll to the state in 2020. So that basically gives them a 2% bounce all around. It gets you to a D plus five result, which is just on the cusp of likely Democratic as well. I, For the record, I do expect Michael Bennett to win by more than that. Florida. Florida's weird. I like, like the polls are all showing like a decently close race for some reason. And this is a way to like average that out. But what you get is a, you know, a roughly an R plus four race. Again, I think Ruby's going to win by like double that, probably even more. 
but you know, this is just a polling average, not my actual prediction, but that's what the polls say, even when you average them out to, you know, benefit Republicans. Georgia, Democrats up by 1.3% here. Again, really good for Raphael Warnock, considering this is a very pro-GOP uh, aggregate. And, you know, in fairness, uh, Trafalgar and Insider Advantage did actually overestimate Trump by a lot in Georgia in 2020, which helps Warnock out because it does actually benefit him in the polling average. But, you know, these other polls like DFP or, you know, YouGov or Marist, they all overestimated uh, the Democrats in 2020 in Georgia, and they obviously would pay the price for that in my polling aggregate. Nevada's up next. Cortez, this is the only state where the Democrats actually do better than they do in 538. Cortez Moss was up by 1.5% uh, in my average. She's up by 0.7 in 538. Um, I think it'll be you know, somewhere between that, but I think you know Nevada polls in 2020 missed in the favor of the uh, the Republicans for like the first time ever. But in 2018, 2016, and 2012, they all overestimated the Democrat, uh, the Republican Party. You know, they had Rom doing better than he actually did. They had uh, Joe Heck winning his Senate election against Catherine Cortez Masto in 2016. They had Adam Laxall winning his governor's race against Steve Sislak in 2018. And they had a dead heat in the Senate race in 2018 that ended up going blue by about 5%. Next up is New Hampshire. Again, not too much of a disparity here. Seven, he's up by 7.5% in 538. He's up by 5.5% in my aggregate. That's, you know, C50 for the Democrats. So yes, they have gotten their majority at this point, although we still have a few more states out here. Nothing too surprising there. Maggie Hassan's ahead, you know, pretty big in every poll here. I don't really think she's in too much trouble as of right now. North Carolina, 538 has it essentially as a dead heat right now. Uh, my polling average has it close to a two and a half point GOP lead. I think that's actually close to what it will be. I think Bud's going to win by around 3% when it's all said and done. But ultimately, that's where my polling aggregate is. Again, a lot of these polls like Civics and, um, you know, PPP have shown Democratic leads, but when adjusted, they will give you a very strong performance for the GOP. And then Signal in 2020 actually didn't do any uh, – it's like this thing with North Carolina. Signal has done a lot of North Carolina polls. They've done three, and they actually boost the GOP by 2% each in my aggre- in, uh, in each of these polls in my aggregate. But you know, in all honesty, I could easily see them underestimating Shari Beasley because this is still a Republican-leaning pollster as you know, uh, poll color right here. If it's yellow, it's nonpartisan. If it's red, it's Republican. If it's blue, it's a Democratic pollster. But either way, I digress. It's just, just, it's just again, another Republican boost I'm giving here just to give them the benefit of the doubt. Ohio, no surprise there. 538 has him up. I have him down because, again, the polls know how missed, they, most of them missed big in 2020 when you factor that in Tim Ryan is down by a fair amount. And also when you take out, like, the terrible center street pack polls and, like, you know, your, uh, you know, the, all those super pack polls that are clearly uh, nonsensical. Once you take all those out, J.D. Vance is, you know, probably already winning. Pennsylvania, this is interesting here. Right now he's up on 538 by 6.5%. Uh, my average has him up by 5.5, but like even when you adjust the polls, he's Fetterman's still up big, and you know he's up by outside the margin of error. So again, you know all the people saying, well, actually, if you adjust the polls, Doctor Oz is winning, are just not telling the truth. I literally did the math here; it's right on your screen right now. If you want to pause and analyze, look at it. Fetterman is still up by 5.5 percent. Last we've got Wisconsin. It should not come as a surprise here that Wisconsin gets a little bit more Republican favorable. Although I will say to 538's credit, they did already have a fairly good. Average there, I only have Ron drawn up by 0.1% more than 538 has him up by. And so, again, Wisconsin polls tend to underestimate Republicans by a lot every year. In 2020, they had Trump down by eight. He only lost by a point. In 2016, he was down by five and a half. He won by a point. So Wisconsin polls uh, t- tend to always swing in one direction. I think we all know what that direction is. So, yeah, this is the Senate map. According to my polling aggregate, um, Democrats would be holding on to their majority. They'd be expanding it by one seat by flipping Pennsylvania by 5.5%. They'd also be holding Arizona pretty easily, but they'd be in close races in Nevada and Georgia. Republicans would be holding on to Ohio, North Carolina, and Florida. But, you know, in that intermediate range, they'd be holding on to Wisconsin by about a point. But again, like if the GOP is winning Wisconsin, any polling aggregate, they're sitting pretty, you know, pretty well. And yeah, so that's what my polling aggregate thinks the Senate elections are going to look like this year. This is not my final prediction. This is not actually my margin prediction. I, I would switch around a lot of these margins if I had the choice to. But this is just, I thought I'd show you guys what I bid because I think it's a pretty cool aggregate. I'll be up to you guys between now and election day because the polls are going to change a lot and we're going to get a lot more information here but yeah so this is the map i hope you learned something i hope you enjoyed i hope you find this interesting again feel free to shoot me a comment you know down below uh if you have any questions or want me to do any more states i will do that for you but this is what the map would look like so thanks so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed if you did please leave a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't already i'll see you all in the next one bye guys